He's a friend to everyone, actually. Yeah, I don't know who you're not a friend to. Well, I could think maybe one or two, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, but, but here they would never be here. Really. So, anyway, I'd like to introduce you, our friend who's going to be the MC for the rest of the evening here. Please welcome Ruben. Why behind government? The why behind the human person? 
that our founding fathers knew they wrote it into the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence. You can't approach any way unless you have the right view of it. And that right view is communicated to us from faith, from church. You see, government, politics, that's actually supposed to be a reflection on earth of the order in heaven. That's right. The order of earth is supposed to make heaven present on earth. There's order and hierarchy in heaven. Do you know that? There's order and hierarchy in heaven. There's authority in heaven. If God wanted this earth to be like heaven, as much as possible. And that is what government is for. That's what law is for. Jurisprudence. It's what family is for. And marriage. Education. The economy. Unless you know the why behind something, you have no idea how to approach it. But we lost that why. What is government for? What is the human person? What is marriage? What is man? What is woman? We have no clue. And so we go charging into it and they turn it to garbage. And that's why we're here tonight. Faith in church gives us a blueprint for life. How to approach everything that like Ruben said. Without that, we have no clue. All we do is make a mess. So no, there's no such thing as separation of church and state. Not in the greater sense. Church and state essentially must be together. And so we lament the situation in our country right now. And so we will begin with the prayer that is a lamentation right from the Bible. So Psalm 54. But as always, the lamentations of the Bible, they always end with hope. Let's pray. <clears throat> oh God, listen to my prayer. Do not hide from my plea. Attend to me and reply with my cares. I cannot rest. I tremble at the shouts of the foe, at the cries of the wicked, for they bring down evil upon me. They assail me with fury. My heart is stricken within me. Death's terror is on me. Trembling and fear fall upon me, and horror overwhelms me. Oh, that I had wings of the dove to fly away and be at rest. So that I escape far away and take refuge in the desert. I would hasten to find shelter from the raging wind, from the destructive storm, O oh Lord, and from their plotting tongues, for I can see nothing but violence and strife in the city. Night and day they patrol behind the city walls. It is full of wickedness and evil. It is full of sin. The streets are never free from tyranny and deceit. If this had been done by my enemy, I could bear it. But if a rival had risen against me, then I could hide. But it is you, my own companion, my intimate friend. How close was the friendship between us? We walk together in harmony in the house of God. May death fall upon them. Let them go to the grave. For wickedness dwells in their home and deep in their hearts. As for me, I will cry to God and the Lord will save me. Even, even morning and noon, I will cry and lament. God will deliver my soul in peace and attack against me. For those who fight me are many. But he hears my voice. God will hear and will humble them. Eternal judge, but they will not amend their ways. They have no fear of God. The traitor has turned against me, has broken our pact with speech softer than a buck, but war within the heart, with words smoother than oil, though they are naked swords. Entrust your care to the Lord, and He will support you. He will never allow the just one to stumble. But you, O oh God, will bring them down to the pit of death. The bloodthirsty and deceitful shall not live at their lives. O oh Lord, I will trust in you. Amen.
Amen. Amen.